Okay. Uh, so a few people are here. Um, can you guys hear me right now? Those that are here. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm definitely not going to be, um, you know, giving a lecture today. So uh, if you guys have questions, you can go and start asking. Um, there's reminders up there. A lot of people are, don't seem to be reading the reminders or watching the videos. So don't know if that pertains to any of you guys, but um, you know, make certain you are reading the announcements uh, and things and, and checking the videos. So yeah, there is a quiz due today. So. All right, so what questions do people have? As a reminder, you can just send it to me privately on chat if you want to, or you can just unmute. I might just work on the Visual Studio Code example one project on my own, but I won't say much unless I get questions and stuff from people. So. Uh, if you're still working on setting up your dev box, um, so the most general advice, um, and, and I may be willing uh, at some point, you know, I'm more than willing, uh, we, we can set up individual um, Zoom meetings with, with people so I can um, control your uh, system and uh, try some things. But the general thing people need to do, um, if you want some help uh, before that, is you should do a vagrant destroy. So I won't do my, that command, but if you're in your repository, can, everybody can see my uh, terminal here I just brought up, right? I think I shared my whole desktop. So I'm basically in my um, repository uh, on my host machine in here. So, uh, what you should do is just do a vagrant destroy. No, we only see your, your camera. OK. 
can only see the camera. Uh, okay, let me share. Okay, how's that? Am I got it sharing right now? I think I do. Well, it says Derek Harter has started um, screen sharing. Well, we don't see the screen. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's probably just laggy. So, all right. So, um, as I was saying, um, the most general thing you can do if you want to get some help uh, by email um, is, you know, go to your repository directory on your host machine, do a vagrant destroy. Uh, which I'm not going to do on this box because I don't really want to destroy this one here. Uh, but hit return, it'll ask you if you're sure, say yes. And all that does is just delete everything cleanly and then you can do vagrant up, okay? So what I really want people to do though is after you hit vagrant up uh, from a clean start, it'll, it'll do a fresh install of everything and you need to copy and paste all the text you get from the installation. So you need to learn how to copy text out of your terminal, whether it's a DOS command prompt or uh, a terminal on Mac OS, or so whatever terminal you're using, you know, just select all the text like you normally do and, and do and copy and paste into an email. So what I really need to see are any error messages that you get from the installation. So, um, I think at this point for the, the 2336 class, I've gotten about 75% people have confirmed they've gotten their systems set up and are in. So if you still don't have it up, you're behind uh, the majority of people. So if you don't see a desktop, so if you only see a terminal, then something happened on the installation and you should do a vagrant destroy um, and do a vagrant up again um, and watch the output from vagrant up and see what errors that we're getting that's triggered, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't see just a, um, um, a login prompt with a username. That means that your desktop didn't get installed. So, you know, you should have a desktop here with your bar and stuff if, if you got everything installed correctly. All right. But yeah, if you get that console, then you at least have gotten um, um, a little way. So if you do have that console, we can log in on a terminal and check stuff then if, if you continue having problems doing a vagrant destroy and vagrant up and it's not uh, installing everything you need to, to get your full desktop. We can always log into that console and try to install things by hand or see what was installed or wasn't what wasn't installed. And it, it definitely will allow you to, you know, enter in a password. I mean, as usual, it, it, passwords are hidden, so it doesn't show what's being typed. But yeah, your password is being typed in. So, you know, you have to just type in the password, even though you can't see it, and hit return, and it will take your password. So, I mean, you know, I get a similar thing if I log in. Um, if, if your box is up from your host machine, you can also do Vagrant SSH, and that'll allow you to, to, to log in, um, um, given a command line. Oh, yeah, it doesn't ask for the password when I do that. I forgot, so, um, but yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I made a mistake there. I was trying to, I was trying to build my project, but um, um, if anybody's working on trying to figure out how to do the assignments, um, so I, I made the mistake of opening the folder, but you, you need to open it from the top or else you won't be able to, uh, you should be able to still do it from a terminal command line, but you won't have the keyboard shortcuts to be able to do things like do clean and build and stuff. Try that again. Let's close that off. So yeah, I really should have done a 
open folder, but just done, did it from the top level of the repository to get everything to work right. Then I should be able to run my targets. Still didn't have something misconfigured. Oh, I still opened it the wrong one, huh? Do it again. Okay, file, open folder. That's what I wanted to think. You need to have the COSC 2336 open as a folder. That's better. Control shift C will do a clean. Control shift B should build everything. Control shift R. What was run? Oh, T. Control shift T to test. Run your tests. There we go. So, what you want to see is all the tests passing for stuff. Does anybody here have questions about the, the content or the assignment? Are you guys all still working on your dev box? Oh, I was able to run the dead box and open the assignments and, and all. It just probably took a little while because it was loading everything. I let it load a little bit and then it, it ran just fine. If you got it up, well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly lots of people 
um, are experiencing um, install issues. So I'm trying to help people work through them, but uh, so you're not alone if you still don't quite have it up, but, but a lot of people have gotten it up too. So it's definitely possible um, to get it up and working. And when you have it up, you should be able to run Visual Studio and, and uh, have the hooks in there so you can do the clean builds and you know, the clean, make clean, make build, and uh, make tests, so you can try stuff out, you know, and work on the assignments, basically. And the video I did showing the example assignment, I kind of, I, I did it completely from scratch, so. Uh, so yeah, when you look at your first program, uh, actually maybe I'll go ahead and look at the first programming assignment, close off the example assignment here. So when do you guys work on your first assignment? Uh, you'll get similar, but uh, instead of writing functions for prime numbers, you have to write functions to, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, calculate the mean and the standard deviation of an array. So it's some practice with functions and arrays and things. But yeah, all your tests will be commented out in assignment one tests. And You won't have any code written in assignment one functions. .cpp, although I did give you the function documentation. So this is your function documentation. So for the assignment one, you're supposed to be writing a calculate mean function that takes two parameters as input. Uh, both of these are, well, the first one is an integer, uh, and the second one is an array of integers, and then it returns the result, calculating the mean of those values in that array. And then the other function takes the same, but um, um, takes the same parameters, so it has kind of the same signatures. So parameter in an integer and then an array of integers, and it returns a double result. Uh, but it's just going to calculate the standard deviation. So. so your first task, like I showed on the example video, is to start by uncommenting these tests. So you got to uncomment just the first test case. Make certain you don't forget the, the end comment thing there. And uh, of course, when you do that, I mean, you should go ahead and try and compile, but um, the, uh, you know, there's no definition of the, these functions calculate mean, so it won't be compiled anymore. So um, when you do a build, control shift B should be set as the keyboard to build. You should be expecting an error. And you should be able to look at the problem like any IDE and uh, click on these to go to where they're at. But yeah, calculate mean is undefined. So, I mean, your first task is always, you know, don't ever do stuff with, with, a, um, with a project that's not building, you know, get it to build first. So, So, I mean, to get to build, all you have to do is correctly define a calculate mean function. Doesn't have to do anything, but um, um, the, the function is supposed to return a double, have a particular name. So you got you can't change these these unit tests. You, you just uncomment the test, but like you know, you can't give it a different name. You have to conform to the API that I've defined in these. Um, uh, in these unit tests that I'm giving you. So it's named calculate mean with a capital M using camel case notation. And 
and it takes a regular integer and an array of integers as the parameters. And the, the function signature always goes in the header file, as I discussed a little bit in my video, right? Um, but the actual implementation goes over in the CPP file. So you really kind of, um, you need to have that same signature. Whoops. So I usually kind of just, once I get my signature of the function, I usually uh, just copy and paste that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the only difference between a signature for a function and an actual function is the actual function has a body, you know, has, has an imp the code that whenever you call that function gets executed. But, you know, our task is we're not writing the function yet. We, we just need to get it to actually compile, right? So, and I'm sorry, yeah, and so I'm, I'm having some laggy stuff here, so I don't know how well people are receiving this, not to mention my machine's being kind of slow. But, in any case, I mean, that, that's pretty much given you kind of the, the beginning of the first step for the first assignment right there. So not, now, unless I made a typo somewhere, if I try and rebuild, it should at least compile, although my test won't be passing, but uh, th there should be a definition of a calculate mean um, and a signature, a correct signature in the, um, the header file for it. So. It's a little while to compile, but yeah, so, you know, it got passed, it did the, compiled everything. Um, so you gotta maybe kind of learn to read kind of what's happening here for the compiler. So the first one, it compiled the particular test file into an object file. And then on the second line, it compiled the, the assignment one functions file into an object file, its object file. And then it linked those together to our test file. Um, so, you know, but, but yeah, you should never, never be writing a lot of code unless you're compiling. Now that we're compiling, we can see how are we doing on the tests and, and start trying to actually implement stuff to pass our tests. So, so if I do the um, control shift uh, T to test, um, I always just, um, inside of Visual Studio like this, I always just scroll right back up to the top. So you really want to start with the first failing test. So um, unfortunately, there's no hook to like just click on this and have it take you to the file, to the location of the test that's failing. So you do have to be able to read these a little bit. Um, so here it's telling me that, that the test um, on line 36 is failing, right? So if we go to the assignment one test.cpp, go here to 36, it's, it's this one, essentially the first test. Um, but that shouldn't, shouldn't surprise you uh, if you do it kind of the way I showed, because I just hard-coded um, a, um, uh, a value in there to return just to get it to, co to compile, but we're returning zero. And, and uh, you know, if we have an array that has a value of three in it, the average, the mean should be three. So we should be, returning three actually so um, and I can, I'm not getting anything anything away here I could actually get this test to pass of course if I hard code three instead and build it and run So yeah, notice, I mean, it's not the one at 36. It, it actually got past that. So it succeeded on that one and it fails on the second one, right? Because again, I'm not really doing the calculation. I'm 
just returning a stub value, hard coded value. So. Yeah. And, you know, um, and I'm not going to show anymore. So, you know, you guys have to figure out how to calculate the mean of an array, how to work with an array, calculate the mean and return the, the result, the resulting mean value, the, 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 the mean of the values in the array X that were passed in. So. But uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, you know, if anybody has any questions, so that, I mean, that was part of the content of this week. So you should have been watching the videos about, you know, how to work with arrays and how to work with functions. Um, I may have mentioned this before, but um, uh, in other places, but uh, all of those example code um, are uh, in the examples directory. So you can actually run and compile those codes if you're watching the videos. So like the week zero one videos, there's three videos. So, you know, thinking about um, like arrays, for example, you could open up the week zero one three arrays example. Um, um, and, you know, I encourage you not to just watch the videos, but to actually bring these up and change the code and run them. So. These might, the, the, the make system actually builds everything. So, but, um, so yeah, if you do a build, I mean, it'll, it'll see that, that everything's up to date. So it should only remake the stuff. So like, like, yeah, if you want to follow along the video, but you want to make a, make a change yourself to try things out. Um, so let's go down to the main function here, or is it? from the first video. So yeah, I mean, you know, if, if we're doing stuff with arrays and we create an array of integers, uh, but maybe you want to assign a different value to index zero. Um, so we could assign it and save it. And then you can see if I if I recompile that and rerun it, do, do I actually get 10 instead of what was in there before? So if we rebuild, it should only build the rebuild the stuff that's out of date, which was the week 01-3, right? There are, are some warnings, but it did build. So you do have to kind of be able to see the difference between warnings. Um, um, and um, um, actual problems in your build here. So these were all warnings here. Uh, oh yeah, the, yeah. The one thing I was going to mention, though, yeah. So there is no uh, uh, thing to to do a test here. So you, so you would have to run these by hand from the console. Uh, so there's no real hook. So so you could you could build them um, if you're doing Visual Studio stuff, like I'm kind of showing here. But uh, you'd have to open up like a new terminal. Um, So I guess like control shift plus for a new terminal, change into that directory examples, and then run the particular one that you're compiling. So we 01-3 in this case. So. So yeah, in this case, the first value was 10 that we'd kind of changed there and we had in our output. So. But yeah, it's the other reason why I want people to have their development box up, you know, as soon as possible. So, I mean, you know, you could just watch the videos, but if you have the development box up, you can come in here um, and, and you've at least got some of the hooks. So you can kind of look at, at the example code um, and follow along in the videos and try things out and stuff.
not certain. I haven't decided if I like this preview window or not. Uh, a lot of people nowadays seem to like having those over there. I might, might have to remove that though. I don't, don't use it a lot to get a big overview and kind of jump to different places. But So, um, no questions about content or things. I might, I might stop the video and see if I can open up for kind of individuals if, if they want, because all the questions have been about the dev box for the people that are here right now. I'm not certain if I can break out and talk to people individually. I haven't, haven't learned all the features of Zoom yet. So I know that I can, if I get into Zoom calls with people, I can, you can give me access to your desktop so I can control the machine and we can install stuff and things. Let me try, try stopping the share here. I know there's, I'm just gonna experiment unless some people start asking us some questions. So. There's breakout rooms. So yeah, if I break you out, does that allow me to talk to you privately? Let's see here, one, one person joined the room. Um, The, I mean, these sessions aren't required, so, I mean, of course not. You don't even have to uh, attend them. So these are supposed to be help question answer sessions. So if people have questions, they should come and ask them. So. I guess people, even though I have these breakout rooms, everybody can hear me when I talk. So I don't know if I can use these to do like individual work with people. Close those out. So feel free to send me a private chat request if, um, if anybody needs help on something in private. Um, I'll try and figure out, see if there's some way I can do this if I have multiple people, but I can get people out individually if I need to. 
most breakout rooms are gonna do it. Let's see. Um, yeah, so there's a way to to choose for the chat anyway. There's a way to um, either choose everybody or, or choose to send a message to a particular person. So you, so you can certainly just send it to me if 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 you want. To run a script in Visual um, Studio, do you have to type make run or can you do like uh, run without um, debugging? Um, to, to run, um, so, so yeah, there's, there's various targets, um, let me get the right one here, yeah, that one. So, so to, to do any of those targets, you have to be in the right directory. So, so you always have to start by doing, you know, changing into the assignment that you're working on. So you change the repos and that, and then I'm going to go to the example one assignment again. Oh, not examples, to assignments, example one, okay. So, um, I mean, these are the only kind of targets, if you do a make help, that are available, right? And again, you can do all these inside of these IDEs as well, although sometimes you have to set up hooks. So I've set up the hooks so you can do like a, a, a clean, a build, and then a test uh, run inside of Visual Studio. And you can certainly set those up for Atom or Sublime or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, you're asking about make run. Make, make run by default runs the unit test for this class. So, you know, if you do a make clean, it, it, it cleans out everything. If you do a make by default, if you don't specify any tasks, um, it'll do a make all by, by default. So make or make all will build everything, basically. And this is all pretty standard stuff for a make build system. So, and I, I mentioned elsewhere, you know, make is, it's an old technology, but it, it's still, you know, lots of, it's good just for a lot, for small kinds of projects. If you have a serious project, you probably want to use a more modern kind of serious tool, but, but make works fine for small build systems like this. So that made everything. And then, then you know, the make run is basically just running the unit tests. So, so and again, all of these, I, I, I think I mentioned this last Monday, I mean, these are just running, you, we could do these by hand. So the commands you see here are, are, are actual also commands for the command line. So, you know, you, you could run the test by hand, assuming that the test executable is built by doing a dot slash tests. Uh, and then these other things are just flags, you know, so I think by default it actually does use colored output. So I don't really need that flag. I could have removed that. So, so you, but I could run the unit test by calling dot test in there. One, one flag I often use for these unit tests is if you use the dash S flag. Oh, and by the way, for you two that are here, um, um, a common thing you can ask for is uh, um, help. So either dot, dot question mark will give you help for one of these command line tools, which I got here. Sometimes it's dot dash H, right? It's, some of them will do it for, for all the common ones. So, but anyway, the, uh, the dash S I often use. So if I want to show not only just the failing test, but also the successful test, you can do the, the dash test dot S uh, like that. And that'll give you all your, passing tests as well as failing tests so all right but yeah did that answer your question so i mean these are all just the different kinds of tests that you can the different kind of targets you can do with this make build system and your main ones you're going to be using for the assignments for this class is to do a clean just to make certain you start from a clean start and then you do a make build or sorry a make all or just a make and that should build everything that's out of date, and then you can do a make run to, to run the unit tests. So. Okay, okay.
if you've never set up one of these build systems like this by hand, I mean, if you've used an IDE before, like Visual Studio or others, I mean, it'll often have the ability to like build a file or, or you know, you know, you'll create a project and it'll build, if you ask it to build, it'll build all the files in your project. But what those, what those systems are doing is they're, they, they set up some kind of a, a default build system behind the scenes for you, you know, so, so yeah, you're, you're, uh, by doing it this way, you're getting a little bit of a view of kind of how a build system like this works. Um, but yeah, Visual Studio Code, this new environment, it doesn't really set up build systems for you. So um, it's, it's not a complete IDE like some others. Um, um, it's more, it's meant to be more of an editor with lots of hooks so that you can use whatever build system and whatever unit testing system and, and other stuff that you need for your project. So. Yeah, there's like two people here. So I'm, I meant to mention um, some people did have problems with the make submit. So I don't know uh, if if um, if you look at this carefully, if you got an error message trying to run the system info command, it's probably because you need to change your Git settings so that it's not converting new lines to to use carriage returns. So so some people apparently missed that step when you installed Git or when they installed Git to to make certain it doesn't convert new lines to to the Windows standard using the carriage return. So. but probably for this class, it's not really gonna affect anything else because we don't normally need to run these sort of scripts anywhere else uh, for the other assignments in this class. So probably not gonna be an issue after this one. Um, so the, the most recent question I had, I'm not completely certain that I, um, understand maybe you can um, expand a little bit on that so so I just showed make submit you have to do it from inside of the dev box and, and make submit should work for any one of these assignments so if I wanted to assign if I wanted to submit example zero one assignment I have to be in the example zero one directory and do the make submit and that creates the uh, the submission packet the submission file you're supposed to upload when you guys are working on assignment um, one for um, for Friday, you should be in the assignment one directory, but you'll want to do your make submit from there, and that'll create the assignment one tar.gzip file, right? Um, and that's the file that you have to find and um, upload this assignment one tar.gzip file once you're ready to submit your work for assignment one on Friday by 5 p.m. So. Okay, I'm um, probably gonna end the session here uh, unless somebody wants to ask the last quick question. So keep sending emails um, if you need to. Um, for people that are still struggling struggling with DevBox set up today, I'm, I'm gonna try and start identifying people and, and getting in one-on-one -on -one, um, Zoom sessions um, and, and, and get your kinks worked out. So maybe send an email request for that so I can start scheduling people for that if you're still working on that. So. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and terminate uh, here and stop the recording. Um.